We were just talking about some of the outperformance of some of these Chinese indices when it comes to the S&P. Um, you actually believe that Chinese equities, they're actually undervalued and they have a big upside left to go. I want to go with what you call your blue sky case. What is your blue sky's case for the rest of this year when it comes to the Chinese markets? Do you see tech continuing this level of, of outperformance? Yes. Um, so, Frank, uh, as you said, over the past three months, China, China equities um, have been the best performing equity markets globally, up about 24 percent since the trough end of, um, at, at the end of January. So looking ahead, um, even after the 24 percent recovery, um, the valuation um, levels remain quite attractive in our view. So at the moment, our benchmark, MSCI China, is trading on 10 times forward earnings, which is still about one standard deviation below the past five-year averages. And looking ahead, I think one of the um, very positive and potentially very powerful catalysts, in our view, would be the uh, corporate governance reform uh, in China. So uh, just a few weeks ago, the State Council unveiled the once a decade uh, kind of uh, development plan for the domestic uh, capital markets, okay. aka the nine measures. And on our estimate, if China can match global leaders in terms of uh, shareholder returns, in terms of corporate okay, governance Kinder. standards, as well as long-term shareholding okay. structure improvement, we think that that's why in a blue sky scenario, Kinder, we think that the potential about, valuation actually. upside could be as high as 40 percent. Well, really, that's what I want to ask you about. Your, your, blue, your blue sky scenario, even your base case, they both kind of depend on three things, uh, that Chinese companies can match global leaders on shareholder returns. Uh, that's price appreciation and dividends, I would assume. Uh, corporate governor standards, corporate governance standards, they have to meet other companies on that, and then also maintain long-term investor ownership. Uh, the last two specifically have been historical challenges. You mentioned some of the uh, government reform. What else has meaningfully changed? I think a few things. Number one, we have a new CSRC chairman just got appointed um, three months ago in China. So I think his mandate is very clear. He wants to uh, increase the quality of listed companies in China. Uh, and number two, I think the disciplinary uh, mechanism and delisting mechanisms have also changed in China. And I think if the right policies are in place, I think the upside scenario can materialize from here. All right. So a week ago today, you saw you say uh, your data shows, actually, that we saw the biggest one day of inflow into Chinese equities, three point one billion dollars. At the same time, we're hearing from some big banks that seem to make your take a bit contrary. And so just in the last week alone, this is just over the last week, we've heard from Morgan Stanley and Citi both see the momentum behind the recent China rally fading. And they're actually citing weak fundamentals and overbought signals. As you're looking at a day of the biggest inflows, they're seeing it as overbought. Well, first of all, we think actually fundamentals are improving somewhat, uh, especially from a macro perspective. Obviously, first quarter GDP came in better than expected. Um, on top of that, from a profit or from an earnings standpoint, we have started to see some earnings upward revisions, particularly in the big TMT internet companies. So I think that um, the recent recovery obviously has been triggered by policy expectation, but at the same time, we've seen some uh, fundamental bottom-up support to the rally.